those people that are coming in that are trying to raise the standards of environmentalism, I commend those people. I have all the time in the world to talk to them. We want to talk about how to make our world a better place. Great, I'm all for it. But I have no time for the people that are obstructionist, that want to promote civil disobedience, want to provoke violence. I have no time for those people, and I got no patience for them. Either. Over the last 10 years or so, I've been following the funding behind environmental activism. I've uh, traced about $600 million that's come into Canada. I don't think Canada really understands that the, the real war here is an outside force pitting Canadians against Canadians. It was a very deliberate strategy to landlock Canadian oil. We run the risk of losing economic benefits that could change our communities for the better. We need to start lifting up not just our First Nation communities, but our own communities. It breaks my heart to see that, that there's so many empty businesses. Why are we not celebrating our own industry and supporting it to get out there? I think this nation needs to wake up. We don't spend your time on environmental protection and getting First Nation youth who are unemployed and angry. We'll get them to protest against projects. It's the same teenagers who commit suicide. Day in and day out in our communities, it is so unfair and cruel. It's a human crisis that these environmentalists don't care about. They don't come back and help plant trees. They don't come back and help the community members get jobs. They just leave them with nothing. You know, I go back to the funders, and it's so hypocritical that the funders from the United States, who made their fortune in oil and gas, now send money into Canada to shut down Canadian oil and gas. It's corporate warfare on a global scale. We need to get it together. It's time that this comes to an end.